As you know, movies based on books often change a lot of content from the original text. This can be cutting out major characters, leaving out iconic scenes or moments, and even completely rewriting the ending. That's what we're going to be looking at here. As it turns out, some major movies that were based on books really took some liberties when it came to the ending. One thing that's often forgotten about Steven Spielberg's Jurassic Park is that it's based on a novel. The book by author Michael Crichton was released in 1990 and is somewhat darker than the movie. In the movie, the core group of characters managed to escape the now overrun island via helicopter and despite all the action, it ends on a more positive note. The book, however, ends a little differently. The survivors escape and are detained in Costa Rica by both the US and Costa Rican governments. The island itself is deemed a hazard and is subsequently blitzed with napalm. It is also alluded at the very end that the dinosaurs may not have died after all, as an unknown pack of animals have been wreaking havoc through the Costa Rican jungle. Overall, the movie Forrest Gump and the novel it's based on are very different. In the movie, Forrest lives an extraordinary life before finally ending up with his childhood sweetheart, Ginny, with the couple having a son together. Ginny eventually dies due to AIDS, and the scene with Forrest by Ginny's tombstone still breaks me to this day. The movie does end on a happier note, though, with Forrest enjoying fatherhood, and the final scene has him helping his son onto the school bus in a similar way to how the movie started. The Forrest we see in the book, however, has a very different life journey, with him at one point being a chess champion, a stuntman, and even an astronaut. The ending is vastly different, with Forrest living out on the streets with Lieutenant Dan and an orangutan named Sue begging for change. Fight Club's author Chuck Palahniuk actually prefers the movie's ending to the one he wrote in the novel. For the most part, the book and the movie follow the same trajectory, with the narrator blowing up skyscrapers that house data on people's financial debt and shoots himself in the head, metaphorically, to kill off the Tyler Durden personality. In the book, though, there is an epilogue where he finds himself in a psychiatric hospital, which he mistakes for heaven, with the psychiatrist reminiscent of God and the nurses as his angels. However, a number of hospital employees approach him and tell him that they are part of Project Mayhem, and they await the moment Tyler returns. But as we mentioned, Palinuk actually prefers the movie ending, saying it overall ties the story up better. Lord of the Rings, The Return of the King. Overall, the main plot points are the same. The ring is destroyed, Sauron's defeated, Aragorn becomes King of Gondor, and the four hobbits return to their beloved Shire. But what they find there in the novel is very different, as they learn the Shire has been taken over by men under the direction of Saruman. The hobbits, led by Merry, revolt and eventually rid the Shire of Saruman, with Wormtongue even killing Saruman outside of Bag End, as opposed to Isengard. The very end is the same, though, with both the book and the movie having Frodo setting sail to the Undying Lands. The film version of The Mist has become notorious for its dark and depressing ending. In the movie, as the group escapes from the supermarket they were hiding in from the eerie mist and the monsters within it, their car runs out of gas before they can escape. To prevent the survivors encountering a gruesome death at the hands of the monsters, the protagonist David shoots them all, including his young son. David goes to kill himself but has run out of bullets, so he exits the car and enters the mist, calling for the monsters to kill him. But an army convoy rolls in, burning away the mist and the monsters, meaning that those deaths were despairingly avoidable, leaving David distraught. The book, written by horror legend Stephen King, actually ends with the survivors escaping and driving off to a hopeful location. But when it comes to changing Stephen King's endings, none are quite as infamous as The Shining. Stephen King notoriously hated Stanley Kubrick's adaptation, with there being notable differences throughout the movie. In the movie, after going insane, Jack freezes to death after chasing Danny through the maze while Danny and Wendy go on to escape. The movie then ends on a cliffhanger, with a close-up on a photo from 1921 where we can see Jack standing in the middle of a bunch of partygoers, bringing up a number of questions. Jack also dies in the book, but in almost opposite fashion, with him being lured to the boiler room, which explodes causing the Overlook Hotel to blow up. Stephen King wasn't the only author to hate how Kubrick ended the movie adaptation of their novel, with the Clockwork Orange author Anthony Burgess also not appreciating Kubrick's artistic license. For the most part, the book and the movie are very similar. However, at the end of Burgess's novel, Alex eventually renounces his life of violence as he reaches maturity and a moral growth that comes with age. Kubrick, however, did not care for this ending, believing it to be inconsistent and basically threw it out the window, leaving Alex to basically revert to his old, disgusting way. 
I Am Legend's ending is probably one of the most divisive in recent times, with Will Smith's Robert Neville dying after sacrificing himself to protect the cure for the disease, as well as two survivors who then escape to a colony in Vermont. There is an alternate ending to this movie that is actually preferred by most people, where Neville learns that he is actually the vampire's, or Darkseer's, greatest fear, and that the test subject he has captured is actually the significant other to the Darkseer's leader. This is slightly more similar to the book's ending, where Neville is also made to be the boogeyman. He is captured by the vampires who are beginning to form their own new society, but commits suicide before he can be executed, and laments over the fact that he will be seen as a superstitious entity, just as vampires once were to humans. Seeing as Disney movies are aimed at a younger audience, it is no surprise that they cut out the more gruesome aspects from books that they were based on. Take Hunchback of Notre Dame, for example. In the movie, Frollo sentences Esmeralda to death for witchcraft, but she is, of course, saved by Quasimodo. Quasimodo and Frollo then engage in a fight at the peak of the cathedral before Frollo fulfills his destiny as a Disney villain and falls to his death, and the couple live happily ever after. The book's ending is far more grim, with Quasimodo failing to save Esmeralda, and she is executed. Quasimodo kills Frollo in a similar fashion to the movie before disappearing, but he is found dead two years later with his body intertwined with Esmeralda's. Hans Christian Andersen's Little Mermaid also has a very different ending to the novel. Ariel doesn't end up with her prince, but her transformation from mermaid to human leaves her in constant horrendous pain and she later dies from a broken heart with her never regaining her voice. She ends up as an airborne spirit who will have the opportunity to go to heaven if she does good for mankind for 300 years. In the movie though, Ariel and Prince Eric defeat Ursula, get married, she becomes a human, and the two of course live happily ever after. Before First Blood spiraled into the Rambo series, the movie was actually pretty close to the book it's based on, except for, of course, the ending. At the end of the movie, Colonel Troutman convinces Rambo to give himself up, which leads Rambo to break down in despair and recount his horrific experiences watching his friends die in Vietnam. In the book, Rambo and Teasel engage in a firefight with Rambo fatally wounding Teasel. However, Rambo realizes he missed his chance to die a good death until he is killed by Troutman, who shoots him in the head. Now, if that happened in the movie, I doubt there would have been so many sequels. Planet of the Apes has one of the most iconic endings of all time, with Charlton Heston's George Taylor learning that the strange world run by intelligent apes is not some far-off world, but is actually a post-apocalyptic Earth. In yet another massive departure, the novel features a couple named Jin and Phyllis who find and translate a manuscript written by journalist Ulysses Moreau? Moreau? Who chronicles his experiences on a planet run by civilized apes. Moreau is mated with a woman named Nova, and the two to escape and head back to Earth, but upon their arrival they learn they have been gone 700 years and find that the Earth is now ruled by apes. We also learn that Jin and Phyllis are actually chimpanzees, and they discard the manuscript as they believe the notion of intelligent humans to be ludicrous. In terms of an adaptation, Zack Snyder's Watchmen is pretty faithful to the graphic novel, but you can guess what was different. The graphic novel ends with a giant squid monster attacking Manhattan, leading to a new joint operation between the previously outlawed superheroes and the government. In the movie, however, there is no giant squid, but instead Adrian Veidt launches an attack on New York using energy reactors and proceeds to frame Dr. Manhattan. Either which way, Adrian Veidt is the villain who orchestrates everything, but hey, far less calamari. God, that's a terrible joke. Why did I say that? The Notebook is probably one of the biggest romance movies of all time, and even people adverse to the romance genre actually quite like it. The movie is very similar to the novel by Nicholas Sparks, with it recounting a love affair between the characters Noah and Allie, while Allie struggles to recognize Noah due to Alzheimer's. The book ends with Allie finally recognizing her partner, and the two fall asleep in each other's arms. This is basically how the movie ends, except for one major difference. The couple actually end up dying in their sleep. In terms of a movie adaptation changing a tearjerker ending in a shocking way, we can look no further than My Sister's Keeper. The book focuses on two sisters, Anna and Kate, with the latter suffering from cancer, and as you can imagine, it ends pretty emotionally, but not as you might expect. In the book, Kate recovers from her cancer and Anna dies in a crash. The movie, however, switched their fates around with Kate dying from her cancer while Anna receives an arts scholarship to study in New York it's safe to say that a number of readers weren't quite pleased with this change. 
Now let's end on a quick bonus. Anyone who took English literature in high school will have likely read Nathaniel Hawthorne's The Scarlet Letter. This was adapted loosely into a movie in 1995, with the ending of Dimsdale dying after revealing he was the father of Hester's daughter, Pearl, being changed to Hester escaping with Dimsdale as war breaks out.